Well guys, I think it's time to revisit something we haven't done since the beginning of summer. Using a monochrome camera with a CLS filter. Now I know what you're saying right now. You're saying, hey, you have four filters there. I know. It's because tonight we're going to be shooting RGB-C. Or is it CRGB? That was taco. <laughs> if you watched my Trifid Nebula video in the beginning of summer, you'll know that I used a very inexpensive SV Boney CLS filter. Now without it, I wouldn't have been able to get the reflection data on top of the Trifid Nebula that actually made that photo. I use the CLS filter because generally when I shoot luminance in the Southwest, it just comes out terrible because of Seattle's light pollution. That's why I just don't shoot RGB for my area because it looks bad. Also, it's hard to do RGB for my area as well. And RGB is kind of freaky because if you want to get a lot of the dark dust that's in that area, it never comes out in your subframe. You don't know if you're capturing it or not. And it's not until you stretch that data where you're like, oh, okay, there it is, right? And I just don't want to waste a night. So RGB always kind of freaks me out. But tonight we're going to be doing it. We're going to be capturing the Iris Nebula tonight. And we're going to be using a CLS filter to capture the luminance. And it's just an experiment because it worked so well during the summer. Why not try it out again? I'll be using Hyperstar at F2 just because of the weather, how it's been lately. So I think the next thing we should do is take a look at the Iris Nebula, see what we're up against. All right guys, here we are. Let's check out the Iris Nebula and see what we're up against. So here it is, the Iris Nebula. And it looks like it is a reflection nebula in the constellation Cepheus. Now Cepheus right now is really high up in the sky. It's actually near the zenith right now and it's actually in a really nice spot since we'll be shooting through very little atmosphere. So we should be getting some nice sharp pictures of it. The only downfall of that though is the light pollution in the area. And what we're trying to capture is the dark dust around the Iris Nebula. And it says here the Iris Nebula is, has a magnitude of 6.8, which tells me that it's fairly bright, but the dust in the area is not. So what makes this different than what I've been shoot, what I've been shooting is most of the things I've been shooting emits its own light. Uh, and those are called emission nebula, right? So there's outside forces that cause the gas to glow in certain colors. And that's what I capture. And it's a lot easier doing that at narrowband than it is in RGB. RGB, all the stuff that I'm capturing here, basically is lit up by the surrounding stars. So you can imagine how faint that could be. So shooting at F2 should be really advantageous for me but the thing about f2 is it does let in a lot of light but from a light polluted area it also lets in a lot of light pollution so i have to be really careful about my exposure time all right so the distance to earth is 1300 light years so it's pretty nearby and it's funny because i always hear that in Cepheus, it's a big dust bowl, and we're about to see how dusty it's gonna be. And I think before we go out there, I think, check this out, I think, look at Taco's over here. Hey, Taco, see him over there? Let me go grab him real quick. All right, so here's Taco. He's pretty shy right now, but I just wanted uh, everyone to see him. Oh, there he goes. He's, he's a little, okay, he's, He's leaving. Taco. Look, there he is. <laughs> Why are you so shy? Why are you so shy? Say hi to everybody. Hey, come here. 
Okay, he's... I think he's had enough right now. This is what I get for... Yeah. Trying to, uh... Get him to be more active in this channel. Maybe someday. All right, guys. Let's get on out there. You'll never guess what time I got here tonight. I got here at 8.30, and I was up and running by 9 o'clock. <laughs> I mean, when I mean up and running, I mean polar aligned, focused, and shooting subs by 9. So it was an early start. I mean, when I got here at 8.30, it was already pretty much dark. So it's great. And since the new moon's out, I'm taking advantage of that for sure. So it's not totally clear, but it's clear enough. And since I have two nights of this, I'm actually really excited to get data on the Iris Nebula. Oh, and when I got here, I uh, saw some Starlink satellites too, which was pretty cool and also kind of made me mad at the same time. All right, let's take a look at my blue subs that I'm getting. I started out with blue. And right here, RGB freaks me out. It always freaks me out because I never see any of the dark dust that I'm trying to capture in my frame. And it's not until I stretch it out and stack it, but I just have to have faith that it's there. And I know it's there because see all these smooth areas in here? That's all that dust uh, where the Iris Nebula is at. So I know it's there. So I'm taking 60 second subs right now because if I take any more than that, like I could do two, three minutes, my stars will start to blow out. So my strategy is just to get a whole bunch of 60 second subs, which is actually a lot of data for Hyperstar. So. When I stack this, this is probably gonna look pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, not looking too bad. All right, guess what guys? This is my green filter. And in a few short minutes, 20 actually, I'll have full RGB set. That is crazy and it's only 10 o'clock. <laughs> Right, moment of truth, checking out my CLS data to see if it's even worth it. And I think it is. I mean, I'm getting some of the darker areas of this reflection nebula, at least in the dust. I can kind of see it here. I think it might add some contrast to what I'm trying to capture, so. And the funny thing is it's, it's like 10, 10:40, so I should be packed up by like 11:10 at the latest. <laughs> Man, I'll be able to get a good night's sleep and get to work. <laughs> Not tired. Nice. And depending on how this all goes, I might not even need a second night. So I guess we'll check it out tomorrow. Do a Nice preliminary stack like we always do. Guys, I think we're gonna need another night. Check this out. Here is a single sub from my CLS filter, okay? And I know it doesn't look like much, but bear with me for a second. See all this right here? This kind of gray area, of course, because you know I'm shooting in monochrome, but it's all nice and smooth, right? So I'm getting, I'm actually getting dust data. And I'm hoping to get two nights of dust data so I can bring it out in our final image. So we're gonna go night two. Night two, guys. And I don't know if you can hear it in the background. I got a concert going on right now. So it's kind of neat hearing music, <laughs> really loud music and cheering while I'm taking subs on the Iris Nebula. And it's the second night and I caught a glimpse of the uh, Starlink satellite. So that was, that was actually pretty cool. So they kind of just went up and then disappeared into the atmosphere. So that's pretty dope. It is 9.30 and I'm focused. I'm taking subs. I'm all 
doing all the things right now. And I didn't even have to adjust my focus. My focus was pretty much dead on from last night. And I'm doing things in reverse because my last filter that I was shooting with last night was CLS. So since the focus was already there, I decided to start with CLS. So uh, I'm getting two nights worth of Hyperstar data on the Iris Nebula and I'm pretty pumped about that because the more signal I capture, the better off I'll be. So wish me luck tonight. I'm just sitting here listening to music and what it sounds like is a Steve Miller band out there right now. I wonder why people are cheering and all that stuff. It's amazing. Can you hear it? <laughs> well guys, it's night two of data complete with Hyperstar. I'm pretty sure I have enough data on the iris to put a photo together. Can't wait to see what this RGBC looks like. And you know what? I could really get used to this fall astro starting early and then packing up early, getting home early and getting a lot of sleep and just being rested for the morning so I can go to work. Oh my gosh. All right. I guess the next time I see y'all is when this data is stacked and we can look at this photo. Good night. All right. Good afternoon, guys. I have to stop doing that. I'm wrecking stuff. <laughs> this is a big light right here, so I'm, never mind. I know there's dust floating around everywhere. All right, guys, I got everything stacked. So now let's take a look at our data from the Iris Nebula. Now, this right here is my RGB data. And this is what I got just in RGB. And it is pretty dusty in there, isn't it? Look at that. Look, I mean, look how much dust we actually got. Yeah, it's not bright or anything like that, but um, that's a lot of dust that Hyperstar at F2 captured, especially using 60 second subs and the amount of exposure time that I was exposing for. Now, now that you've seen that, uh, here is an RGBC, so CLS filter as the luminance. And look at all the dust that we got in the area. Uh, I added a little bit of saturation and I used Starnet to process the dark dust in the area. And then I re-added the stars back in and my final result is not bad from this heavy light pollution zone. So you will see the Iris Nebula nestled in this big cloud of dust, and it looks amazing. I've been trying to get a really great picture of the Iris Nebula. I think I attempted this in 20, I think 21, maybe 2020, and it turned out just terrible. I just, just didn't have the skill, right? But here, and using a F2 instrument such as Hyperstar, allowed me to get this photo right here. And it's pretty darn cool if you ask me. Well, I think what we should do too later, maybe in another video, is just shoot normal luminance. See what that actually looks like for my area because I have limited experience with LRGB on my area because it's just so darn hard. But knowing that I can do shorter exposures and just stacking a lot of them helps out. Maybe that'll help my luminance, my just my standard luminance filter. So that might be in an upcoming video, guys, but I guess now enjoy my photo of the Iris Nebula.